Welcome to this Smith & Nephew Digital Education Module on Time. This forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. My name is Lisa, Complex Wound Specialist at Smith & Nephew. Today we will be discussing time. By the end of the module you will be able to describe the wound bed preparation cycle, recall the steps for wound bed preparation principles and identify wound management options for time. The concept of wound bed preparation has gained international recognition as a framework that can provide a structured approach to wound management. By definition, wound bed preparation is the management of a wound in order to accelerate endogenous healing or to facilitate the effectiveness of other therapeutic measures. Time is now a widely used concept in wound management, providing a practical and systematic guide to bedside care. The wound care practitioner proceeds stepwise through a simple series of interventions which form an iterative process until healing is achieved or the lack of a response indicates that other methods are required. Routine wound assessment is a critical part of reaching a diagnosis and monitoring the effect of treatment. The initial wound assessment provides baseline data against which future observations can be measured, but meaningful comparisons can only be made if a standardised assessment system is used. To assist with implementing the concept of wound bed preparation, the TIME acronym was developed in 2002 by a group of wound care experts as a practical guide for use when managing patients with wounds. The TIME table summarises the four main components of wound bed preparation. Tissue management, control of infection and inflammation, moisture imbalance and the advancement of the epithelial edge of the wound. We will talk in detail around these principles over the next few slides. In an effort to evolve the time principles of wound bed preparation, a group of international experts consisting of physicians, nurses and scientific researchers developed a time clinical decision tool which is easy to use, accurate and practical. The tool guides the user through patient and wound assessment and reassessment to ensure the most appropriate interventions are in place. They used an ABCDE approach. It is important to identify that the patient has the ability to heal and that healing is the goal. If healing is expected, it is important to assess the patient, their environment and the wound. Next, bring in specialists as needed to control or treat systemic factors such as nutrition, diabetes, vascular compromise or others. Decide appropriate treatment by using the TIME acronym to identify and prioritise barriers to healing. And lastly, during the course of care, evaluate the results of the treatment. For this section, we'll refer to the T in time, tissue, non-viable or deficient. The goal is to assess for and identify the type of non-viable tissue and establish a plan and goals for management. Where tissue is non-viable or deficient, Wound healing is delayed. Necrosis, eschar and slough are terms that describe non-viable tissue. For epidermal cells to migrate across a wound surface, a well-built extracellular matrix is required. Therefore, early interventions to remove devitalised tissue are an essential part of wound management. Debridement is the process of removing devitalised tissue and or foreign material from a wound and it may occur naturally. However, in some cases the patient may have an underlying pathology 
which affects the ability of the body to naturally debride the wound. The next set of presentations in this series of modules will focus more in depth on tissue. The eye of time represents infection and or inflammation. All wounds contain bacteria at levels ranging from contamination to infection. Inflammation is a physiological response to wounding and is required for wound healing to progress. However, excessive or inappropriate inflammation, often in the presence of infection, may have serious consequences for the patient. The increased bacterial burden may be confined to the superficial wound bed or may be present in the surrounding tissue of the wound margins. Several systemic and local factors increase the risk of infection. When a wound is infected, it contains replicating microorganisms which elicit a host response and cause injury to the host. Diagnosis of infection is primarily a clinical skill and microbiological data should be used to supplement the clinical diagnosis. Treatment of infection should be managed with local methods such as debridement, wound cleansing and the use of topical antimicrobials. In some cases, systemic antibiotics may also be required where there is evidence of deep infection. The M of time looks at moisture imbalance and achieving the optimum level for a wound. In order to choose the optimum treatment in terms of moisture balance, a comprehensive wound assessment should take place. Deciding how wet a wound is can be challenging at first. Assessment of the exudate is an important part of wound management. The type, amount and viscosity of the exudate should be recorded and dressings selected based on the exudate's characteristics. Understanding what dressings are available for use is important. For a dry wound, a hydrogel or hydrocolloid product is appropriate. For low to high exuding wounds, an appropriate foam, superabsorbent gelling fibre or negative pressure wound therapy. Whatever the treatment, the main objective should be optimising moisture balance. E represents edge of wound, non-advancing or undermined. Let's talk about what we should expect in a healthy wound edge. The final stage of wound healing is epithelialization, which is the active division, migration and maturation of epidermal cells from the wound margin across the open wound. There are many factors which need to be present in order for epithelialization to take place. The wound bed must be full of well vascularized granulation tissue in order for the proliferating epidermal cells to migrate. Undermining or rolling of a wound edge can also influence the ability of the wound to heal. Undermining can be indicative of a chronic wound and in particular those wounds that are colonised with bacteria or infected. It is important that these wounds are diagnosed in a timely fashion in order to prevent delayed healing. The edge of the wound will not epithelialise until the wound bed is well prepared so it is important to ensure T, I, M and E are all managed appropriately alongside E to get the wound to heal effectively. Measuring a wound at the start of treatment is seen as best practice to enable accurate assessment of the impact of a clinician's intervention. Subsequent measuring can identify whether or not a wound is failing to heal or deteriorating. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the following quiz questions.
You have now completed this module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you have learned and apply it into your daily practice. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link shown to access a copy of the revalidation form. Simply put the title of the session on the form and file in your portfolio. Thank you for your time today. Please remember to look at other sections to access other modules to help you on your learning journey. Thank you.